Hi, in the previous lectures, we saw that the prefix nano would be attributed to anything with dimension of 1 to 100 nanometers. In fact, nano world involves a very broad range of super tiny stuff from a variety of nanoparticles such as gold nanoparticles, silver nanoparticles, to nanomaterials and nanostructures such as quantum dots, carbon family structures like carbon nanotubes, graphene nanoribbons, fullerene, and many, many more. Nanoparticles, one of the building blocks of nanotechnology, are all around us right now, and they have been all around us throughout the human history as well. They were with us when human beings began making their first tools, and they are present in the products we buy at the grocery store every day. We just discovered the nanoparticles few decades ago when electron microscope became available. But now, the more we turn our microscope on everyday objects, the more nanoparticles we seem to find. Even the most seemingly mundane objects can give rise to nanoparticles. Detecting nanoparticles is simply a matter of being able to look closely enough to see them. You could find nanoparticles even in your jewelry box or in the drawers. And the closer we look, the more it appears that particles at the nanoscale are instrumental to important geochemical and biogeochemical reactions and kinetics such as the availability of the elements in the ocean and the, the bioavailabilities and toxicity of many elements. And also we can talk about the nanobioorganisms such as viruses, proteins, antibody, etc. More or less, it's like a zoo with a variety of very small things. There are some points regarding elements of this nano zoo that we should take into account. First of all, these nano zoo things exist at the very bottom layer. Imagine a particle at the nanoscale. Since it is very small, it can easily enter a blood cell, for example, or pass through any kind of tissue or filter. It can be dangerous too, like the case because of the industrial pollutants, nanoparticles are released in the air and as someone inhales that air, nanoparticles can pass through the lung tissues and get into the body and it's very hard to detect and defeat those particles because they are very very small. The point is, nano stuff can walk through other layers. This can be used in the positive way as well. Just consider a water filter by means of nanomaterials such filters absorbs any bacteria and dirt. As a result, the filter water becomes super clean and healthy. Second point is, some of the nanomaterials are man-made and some of them are generated naturally. Man-made nanoparticles can be classified as the incidental nanoparticles and engineered one. As name says, humans generate incidental nanoparticles with no purpose, for example, in the mining process. Black lung in, the, in miners for the past several hundred years can be linked to the respiration of incidental nanoparticles. Even today, people living near high traffic areas or large scale manufacturing operation areas often experience much higher incidence of chronic respiratory problems that are beginning to be linked with nanoparticles found in the area. Engineered nanoparticles, on the other hand, are built in the lab more sophisticated and generated for a specific purpose actually. For instance, some nano-engineered materials are used to mimic the crystal mineral structure of human bone. These materials are used as a resin for dental applications too, or um, nano-engineered material are used to make superior household products such as degreaser and stain removers, environmental sensors, air purifiers and filters, antibacterial cleaners, and many, many more. So, to put this lecture in a nutshell, I talked about the concept of nano zoo. Once we attribute the nano world to the space of 1 to 100 nanometers, then a broad range of things are included from nano bioorganisms such as viruses to nanoparticles such as quantum dots and even features like radiation with wavelengths of 1 to 100 nanometers. These are all the animals of the nano zoo, if you like to say. Nano things are such a small that can be placed, exist, or travel to the very limited spaces which gives them special capabilities. Nano things can be found everywhere. Any interaction may result in the generation of nanomaterials and etc. Some sort of nano things are generated by nature while some others are built by humans for a specific purpose. 
Thanks for your attention. See you in the next lesson.